Hi everyone, Random Noise here. Today I wanted to show you some of my most favorite tips and tricks on the Korg Electrap 2. I saw a few comments on my videos of people asking how do I create some of this stuff that I do on the Electrap, so I thought I could gather it all around into a practical way by showing you how do I actually use it when I create a pattern from scratch. This tutorial will be divided into different chapters, so feel free to jump only to the ones that interest you. Let's start. So one of the most common questions I see people ask is, how do I completely initialize a patch? So let's say I'm not really using one of the factory patterns and I want to use that memory slot for one of my own. So an easy way to do that is by accessing the menu and then going to the data utility, which is 27 on page 27 on the menu. And by pressing enter here, I then Enter everything that is under the data menu. And then you will need to scroll into page five where we will see initialize this pattern. So I press enter and then it will ask me if I sure. Yes, I am sure. So what happened now is that this pattern has been completely resetted into uh, an empty pattern. that has only a kick now on 120 BPM. It sounds like this, right? So this is give us a room to start from scratch now. And I'm about to change the tempo and an easy way to do that is by pressing shift and tap. And then you enter into the tempo menu. So the Korg Electribe doesn't really has a, an arpeggiator feature, but you could do something very similar by programming the step sequencer. So let's say I want to have this sound over here to be kind of arpeggiated. So the way to achieve that is by, first of all, I'm gonna change the last step. So pressing shift and this pad over here, which is the seven pad, if I'm not wrong. And then you will see here that you have 16 bits now, but I can change that to have only six bits. So what does it mean is that the cycle of the pattern will be looped every six bits. So if I press play now and I go to the sequencer and you can see here that now this pattern is repeating itself in a loop only after six bits compared to if I bring it back all the way to the 16 like before you see so what this gives us is a shorter pattern to work with now and I can basically come, come here and do this Now, if I want to modify the notes for this pattern, I will go to the step sequencer by pressing shift and this pad over here, and then pressing again, enter. And now we are in the step sequencer mode. From here, I can decide which note will be on and which note will be off. So right now I want all the six patterns to be on and I want to modify their note. So with this arrow, we are entering into the note mode. And now all the notes are on C4, as you can hear. So I'm going to create some simple, maybe C minor pattern. And the way to change the note is by using this knob over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down all the way to C2, because I want to go a bit with a lower octave. And I'm going to move on to the next note. And actually a fast way to move to octave below, up or down by pressing shift and turning around this knob. So I'll do this again here. And here. And as you can see, the step sequencer on the Korg Electribe is not really one of the best. It's not so easy to program, but with a bit of an effort, you could get some really interesting results. So right now what we have is six bits that repeat themselves with the note of C2. Let's hear that. But we don't want to have the same note repeating itself. It's, it's, it's quite boring. So we want to create some more variation. So I'm going to select this note over here and I'm going to change that in the C minor 
scale to be something like maybe a G2. And this one will be a G sharp. And we change this one to a D sharp. This one we can keep as a C, as it, just to create uh, an interesting variation. And this one we can choose maybe F. So it sounds like this now. So it's very similar to what you get when you are using an arpeggiator. Now in the step sequencer mode, you could also change the gate time for each one of the notes or the velocity. So when you change the gate, basically it's mean that this note will be open for a longer time, for a longer period. So we can create some sort of legato effect. So if I choose this one and I change this to be a tied, so it's mean this note will be tied to the next note after that. And I want to tie this note. And then it sounds something like this. So it's a bit more interesting. So let's exit the step sequencer mode. And I'm going to go now into the voice assign, which actually define if this instrument is going to be a polyphonic or monophonic. And I want it to be a monophonic just to have this legato effect and having one note slide to the next one. I don't want the notes to overlap each other. So I'm going to change this to mono two. And play it again. And you can hear now the legato. Now if I change the envelope in here and changing it from decay to release, we're getting more of a staccato effect. But I actually want it to be a bit longer, so we will keep it like that. And let's mute the kick just for now because I want to hear that part better. So usually what I will do next is find some interesting oscillator that I like. Now each oscillator on the Colger Act tribe can be modified with this knob over here. And in each oscillator, we are changing different aspects of the sound with this button over here, which is kind of a global setting that predefined by Korg for each one of the oscillators. So let's hear how this one goes. Next, I will add a filter on top of the oscillator. And the Korg Electra have a few interesting filters. We have the MS20 low pass filter. We have the MOG low pass filter. We have the Prophet 5 low pass filter. The Oberheim low pass filter. And one of my favorite, the Acid, which is basically the Roland TB303 low pass filter. So first I will add some resonance, then lower the cutoff, and I want this filter to move over time, but I don't want to do it manually, so I'm going to use the modulation here to change the settings from LFO, low frequency oscillator. Basically, this is a way of the change the filter over time. And here I can define the amount of change and also the time, the speed of the change. So if so now we have a more interesting sound that develop over time. Let's bring back the key. But let's change this kick. I don't really like this kick. And I can change it here from the oscillator knob.
To make the kick a bit more snappier, I'm going to use an effect over here, which is the punch, which is the, actually the transient of the kick. So it's become more clickier in the beginning compared to... And I prefer this one because without it, it's kind of getting lost in the mix, especially when you're adding the bass, the bass later. Okay, so we have our arpeggiator. Now let's add some bass line. And I really like this oscillator for bass because it has more lower frequency in it. So what I'm doing here now, I'm applying a filter again and I'm using the, this time I'm using the Electribe filter, low pass filter. And I'm gonna go to the keyboard mode so I can play the whole range of the scale. And I'm gonna go one octave down. Now by default, the scale will be on Dorian, but I like to go to the chromatic settings just because it's confused me less. I'm used to play on keyboard, so it's easier for me to know the notes like that. So now I know that this is gonna be a C. And this is gonna be a C sharp, D and D sharp and so on. So I know that my pattern is in C. So I want I want to have my bass line to be in C as well. So they are harmonically matched. And I'm gonna record this bass line manually. We can barely hear the bass line now because the filter is very, very low. The cutoff filter is very low. So I'm going to add an envelope. And I'm going to shorten the envelope a bit with this decay knob over here. I feel like the bass is kind of lost in the mix, so I want to add some overdrive on top of it. So there is more present now for the bass line in the mix. Next, I'm gonna add some hi hats. And I'm gonna use the sequencer to sequence the hi hat into the pattern. I'm gonna add closed hi hat on each one of the beats. And I'm gonna go to the groove, change the groove to off beat. So, off beat basically means that every time the beat is in the middle between the four on the floor beat, so 3, 7, 11, and 15 will be accented, and all the rest the velocity will go down. So let's hear this in solo mode just to give you an idea of what the effect is actually doing. To enter a solo mode, we press again the mute, the part mute button, and then it's blinking like that. So if I press now this pad, we are soloing only this sound now. So if I play, we can only hear now the closed hi-hat. And we are in the on the offbeat groove type. And then I'm going back to the groove depth. And then I'm deciding how much do I want the effect to affect this part. And let's move to the sequencer so I can show you what's happening. So you see every time the beat is falling on three, seven, 11, and 15 here, it's being more accented and it's create a nice groove.
when we add the other parts, let's add the kick. Let's add the bass line now. And then our arpeggiator. It might be a bit high in volume, so we can push it away in the mix. And I now can add maybe some clap. So again, I'm going to use the sequencer to add the clap on this bit and this bit. And it's not. I cannot hear it now because I forgot to unmute it over here. So I'm gonna unmute all the rest of the parts so we can hear them. Right, so now I wanna show you how can you kind of create a fake pad. And I'm saying a fake pad because um, the Korg Electribe, while it's a polyphonic synthesizer, and I can show you by changing this to the keyboard mode and selecting this part. So polyphonic means that I can play this note and this note together at the same time. In any combination of several notes at the same time. But the envelope is monophonic, which means if I change the mode here of the amplitude to a release. So we have a very long release. What's happened is every time I press a note and I press a note after that, it will cut the previous one. So we don't really get the effect of a pad when you have one note entering the beginning of the next note after that, which is, it's, it's not really great. Um, we want to create, usually we use pad to create atmosphere. And we want the note to, you know, complement and continue each other. What's happening here is they just cut each other and it's, it's disturbing our listening. So the trick to overcome this, it's actually quite simple one. All we have to do is go to the effect mode and search for a delay, right? Um, and the longer delay actually works better. So the numbers that you see here um, correspond to the bits, like how long. So this is a BPM delay. So, so basically what it means is how long it will go before the feedback will repeat itself in the delay and we will be able to hear it. So if I play it again now, here it's repeating. But I don't want it to sound like jumping like that. So to make it sound more like a pad, I'm going to increase the attack. Also increase the release. So now if I press one note and then another one, it sounds like a pad, like a real pad. And I can even do that with a few notes, so. And let's go one octave higher. Right now, the length of this pattern, and if I go to length here, is only one. So it's mean that this pattern is only 16 bits that repeats itself. But I want to increase that to give the pad some more time to change over time. So what I can do is change this number from one to four, and four is the maximum on the Korg Electribe. And this basically gives us 
64 bits, 4 multiplied by 16. And by default, when I change that, the pattern from the first measure is going to be copied to the rest of the tree. So now I can give the pet some more time to evolve. Let's record this. Changing the oscillator here to something more soft. Now I can even apply some interesting modulation to this pad. So this is a stereo pan here. You can hear the sound from left to right. Now, once that I have this basic pattern programmed, what I usually do is mute all the parts. And here is where artistic style come into play. And you can decide how you want to start the track. So maybe you want to start just with the kick. Or you want to start with the arpeggiator. Or you can start maybe with the pads. And gradually you start to introduce new parts of the song to make it more interesting. And we can also so right now, that was introduced maybe a, a bit aggressively, it's just interrupting the pad. So what I can do is lower the volume of this part, unmute it, and then introduce it slowly. close hats. And the same thing with the arpeggiator. I can lower the volume, unmute it, and slowly bring it into the mix. dropping the key. Thank you for watching and I really hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I usually upload my jam session and some other tutorials related to electronic music. Thanks again, see you next time.